Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Adweek Editor-in-Chief James Cooper and Philadelphia's greatest inventor since Ben Franklin, Michael Dubin, Founder and Chief Executive Officer of Dollar Shave Club. Wow, that's some really low energy clapping, people. Come on, let's bring it up. Come on. We've got They've Michael here Dubin here. He's got to have some energy. So, Michael, thanks for being with us uh, thanks this evening. Um, we're almost to drinks. I'm sure some of you guys are drinking already, but... Um, Don't you have a bar cart that can go through it, here? It's really good, though, yeah, so... Um, I'm sure other conferences do that. But... Uh, <laughs> Gil? Okay. Um, you're, one of the, you're one of the original uh, disruptor direct to consumer brands. Um, but a lot's happened in, in your world and the marketing ecosystem in general uh, since uh, even 2017 when you were acquired by Unilever uh, for a billion dollars. 16. 16, sorry. Uh, I keep getting that wrong. Um, so how, are you, how, how is the brand evolving to you know, stay relevant and competitive in this really complex um, environment? So, so we started out solving, we, we launched in 2011 um, and um, we started by solving a very simple problem, which is that razors were overpriced and the shopping experience was pretty frustrating and inefficient. The, you had the razor fortress, it was always locked. You had to find the person with a key. Uh, that, was, that was very frustrating. Um, but, and, and, and that worked. I mean, we, we grabbed a huge piece of, of market share um, and we still retain that today. But men are evolving. They're spending a lot more time thinking about their, their grooming. They're a lot more comfortable talking about what they put in their hair on their face, on their body, to look and smell and feel great, and um, you know we we wanted to evolve with them. So, uh, and there are a lot of great problems for us to solve now as well. Um, it's it's just it's a different it's a different type of problem. So, if you're a guy that wants to take care of yourself and you want to look, smell, and feel your best, which we all do, um, you have a, a lot of challenges getting the products that are right for you. You when you go to the store, the 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 aisles are spread out, so it takes too much time, very inefficient. Um, the, the the shelves themselves are very crowded, um, and the products themselves are are in a lot of a lot of ways over marketed, and sometimes they're not very clear in terms of the benefits uh, that they offer you, uh, and the people that are there to help you um, are not really great. They're, they don't know who you are. They don't know what your concerns are. Um, and they're not well trained in those products. And that's really true of both uh, physical retail and online retail as well. So Dollar Shave Club um, in its, in its you know, Dollar Shave Club 2.0, if you will, uh, is all about solving that sort of larger set of problems. Um, and it's a much bigger uh, total addressable market as well. Should we show the, uh, the video? Yes. Yeah, so the video that you're about to see is a, is a um, it's our new campaign. So we've we've um, I'll, I'll set it up a little bit. Uh, we evolved the. We evolved the business model, so whereas we used to be razors once a month, um, we are now everything you need a couple times a year. Uh, and that's a new business model that we've started rolling out. Started rolling it out in, in March, and it really started picking up steam in June. Uh, body wash, hairstyling creams, gels, et cetera. And uh, along with our new business model, we wanted to make sure that we had a new brand to go with it. Not a new brand, but an evolved brand. Um, so what you're going to see is our Get Ready campaign. Um, we wanted to focus on the moment that guys and girls get ready um, in, in the morning or in the evening for whatever it is they do to look, smell, feel their best. And um, uh, we can watch it, and then I can explain what, what it is. OK. Uh, can we play that video, please? Whether I'm right, whether I'm wrong, whether I find a person or never belong, I've got to be me. What else can I be? But what I Almost finished. I want to live, not merely survive. And I won't give up this dream of life that keeps me alive. 
I've gotta be me. I've gotta be me. The dream that I see makes me. Does this work? Not slick back, no. That faraway prize, a world of success, is waiting for me. If I heed the call, I won't settle down or settle for less. As long as there's half a chance that I can have it all. That's how it must be. I can't be right for somebody else if I'm not right for me. I've gotta be me. I've gotta be me. Excuse me. What else can I be? Can you get my back? What I am. And I won't give up this dream of life that keeps me alive. I've gotta be me. I've gotta be me. The dream that I see makes me what I am. <sighs> that faraway prize, a world of is waiting for me. If I need a call, I will. In 1990, I moved to Philadelphia. I was transformed. As long as there's half a chance that I can have it all. Hey, does this work? Yes! Yes! I'll go it alone. That's how it must be. I can't be right for somebody else if I'm not right for me. I've gotta be me. That's, that's awesome. So you're, you're definitely sticking with the, uh, the humor as a marketing tool for the brand. We are. Um, I, but, you know, we're not moving. We definitely want to stay true to our roots and, and use humor as a tool like we've always done. But um, in this campaign, we've, we've you know, evolved a little bit and we have veered away from just sort of humor um, for humor's sake. And we've, we've chosen to spotlight, you know, some real sweet and sincere moments. I mean, if you, if you look at the piece, you see a lot of... I guess the moment that you get ready, the moment that guys get ready in the morning or in the evening, it's when we see ourselves at our most vulnerable. It's when we, um, we really have to focus on, on conquering our insecurities. And uh, Dollar Shave Club wants to be your partner in that moment. So you see a lot of guys who are struggling with real issues. You have guys that are trying to figure out how to fig how to style that last little bit of hair that they have. Um, and then they just decide, you know, F it, I'm gonna shave it all off. Um, you know, you see, you know, we wanted to make it okay. We wanted to celebrate those moments, those real moments, um, and not just have fun for fun's sake. But yeah, of course, you see a guy putting on ball powder in a very celebratory way, and you definitely see some things that I think, you know, I heard a couple chuck a couple knowing chuckles from the audience when you see a guy doing a snot rocket. We didn't want to shy away from those <laughs> moments either. Um, so there's a bit of there's a bit of humor, no doubt, but there's also um, a lot of sincerity in it. So how do you how do you match that um, that culture that you developed with um, the evolving direct to consumer marketplace? I mean, you're, there are lots of very unique aspects about direct marketing. Um, how are you approaching it um, today? So, I guess you know. The way that the way that we think about DSC is, uh, we we do think of it as a brand first, and our our the channel that we sell in is it is an online channel only. We've purposely chosen not to go to wholesale or, or mass retail uh, because we're 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 focused on building a direct relationship with our customer. We are interested in solving problems for guys as it relates to helping them take care of their minds and their bodies, and it's 
challenging for the reasons that I mentioned to do that um, in, in a retail, in, in, a, in a mass retail environment. And, and a lot of online players aren't doing that really well. So we think about building that connection. That's, that's nothing original. A lot of direct consumer brands focus on the online channel. But the more we know about a guy and what his concerns are, what his challenges are, what his insecurities are even, how he thinks about living his life, the both you know his mind and his body, the better we can tailor the product, whether that's a content product uh, or or um, you know physical product that they use in their hair or on their body. Do you? I mean, there are women that were that were featured in the uh, in in the clip. Are, are you going to be more aggressive about going after the women consumer? I think, uh, you know, that's a question that we get a lot. Um, a lot of our members are women, not a majority, but a, a meaningful percentage, uh, and for themselves. And I think that they're, um, you know, they. We always design our fragrances and our formulas to be appealing to women, um, and uh, but we've never taken sort of a these products are designed for women approach because we think that the big market right now, the big need is um, for for guys in in, um, in in helping solve those problems for for guys. Um, the it's not to say that there aren't great challenges or great problems to solve in in the women's cosmetics market or in the in the women's wellness market, uh, but but um, I think that guys it's a much more evolved ecosystem for 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 women. Women have been more thoughtful about this area of their lives than guys have been for a very long time. And uh, guys, you know, we're hoping to build some of that infrastructure so that guys can, you know, feel more confident. Uh, we think that's the bigger opportunity right now. Doesn't mean we won't ever launch products for women, uh, but we think the big opportunity is guys. So what's the what's the most Gonzo product you um, thought about launching but didn't? And then, then what's out there on the fringe that has you sort of intrigued? Um, let's see, the most Gonzo product. Um, well, you know, you saw a guy. You saw a guy um, with the with the shaver um, shaving his undercarriage there, um, and he had to position the mirror uh, in a way that was it was a, a pretty compromising angle there. I mean, you have to be in pretty good shape to get there. Um, but I think that there's a. I, I think that there's a there's a product at some point that someone could make. Maybe it'll be us. Maybe not. Um, where there's a little bit of a mirror, uh, little strap onto your leg mirror situation, so you can <laughs> take care of that without having to, to squat over the over the mirror. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did ask. All right. Well, I'll let me know when you have that one ready. Um, uh, so what do you think that, uh, in general, what do you think brands um, at their own peril are underestimating, underestimating about the customer and the customer journey today? Um, hmm, I, I think that, I, I think that brands might, you can never under, you can never underestimate the, you can never overestimate the customer's desire for something new. Um, and that, that something new and shiny has become a little bit of an addiction for consumers because every time we open our Instagram, there's a new brand or a new product from a new brand that we've never heard of and everything's new and exciting. Uh, and the consumer has almost, you know, equated new with better. And there are a lot of incumbent, uh, incumbent brands that, are, that, have, that, that have been around for a really long time offering great products great services um, who probably don't get the credit that they deserve because uh, we're a culture that's obsessed with new and shiny and flashy. Um, and so, but that doesn't mean that, um, okay, you're not getting the credit that you deserve, but nobody's crying for you. So um, I think that it's, in, it's probably incumbent upon these legacy brands to think about how they can um, launch new brands, uh, new brands that are either affiliated or just completely different, um, you know, t than the ones that they run and put a lot of marketing muscle behind because, um, you know, the, the existing brands, uh, the legacy brands, they, they, they come with a lot of history uh, and sometimes that history is, is positive and sometimes it comes with a lot of baggage and I, I won't name names, but, but there, are, there are big brands out there with a lot of baggage, some of it recent, some of it, um, some of it earned long ago. Um, and and it, you, you have to meet the consumer, consumer's need and obsession really for, for new and exciting. So as a, as a creatively led company um, with you sort of 
really at the at the forefront of it um, in terms of like your vision and also your presence on in these ads. How's your definition of creativity evolved? Um, well, it's a good it's a good question. Um, I I think that. Well, this is a good segue for me to do my shameless plug. We're hiring a CMO, um, and if you know a great CMO, send them my way. It's michael.dubin at dollarshaveclub.com. Um, but the notion of creativity for us is applied across a bunch of different platforms. Um, it's not just the, the, uh, the advertising channels, what you see on YouTube, what you see on television or Facebook. Uh, the digital product platform itself, our digital store, it, you know, has to be just as creative, creative as um, as the commercials that, like you just saw. Um, but that notion of creativity is is based on a an evolving discipline. Um, you know, it's it's most people know it by UX or or you know UI. Um, it, people more and more are calling it product design, and it's the you know it's a it's a your digital store uh, is a is a or digital presence is a uh, an interactive. Uh, you know, living, breathing application that uh, that is based on the success of which relies on your product designers having a really intuitive uh, understanding of, of how the user's eyeball moves across the screen or or what their instinct is going to be and anticipating that so that you know where the button should go or where the the copy should should move as you shrink your browser size or, or whatever and um, that is that is as much architecture um, and math as it is creativity and what color the button is and what you know what what anything looks like on the page and but it inherently is a creative exercise just like Building a house that's designed uh, to be beautiful and functional—that's that's what an a, that's what a, a web application is. And obviously, everything's mobile now, and 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 those devices are changing all the time, and the screen sizes are different. Uh, so that that application really has to, um, you know, live and and breathe on its own. And and that's 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 creativity. Uh, sadly, we're almost out of time, so I'll, I'll end with this last question. Um, what what is what do you think is really mission critical for? brands playing in the DT space to be doing now uh, in order to be competitive in say three years? Well, I, I don't know that I have I don't know that I have the answer, but at Dollar Shave Club, I think one thing that has benefited us greatly is having all of those product designers, all of those advertisers, um, or our advertising creative team um, sitting right across the walkway from each other, so that when everybody's thinking about uh, the brand and what's the message we need to transmit to the consumer, um, uh, you know, they're thinking they're in the same meetings. They're 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 um, you know they're sharing the same coffee, as it were. And I think it's really important to have those those groups together. Um, additionally, our content, you know, we've invested heavily in content. Uh, we have um, content comes to life for us in two places. One is at melmagazine.com. It's our men's lifestyle editorial platform. Actually, you won't see any Dollar Shave Club branding and, and presence on it. Um, right now, its chief mission is is sort of at critical success, and you know we're doing about 2.7 million uniques a month there, and we're we're really proud of it. And the other place is Dollar Shave Club original content, and I think that um, and that stuff on Dollar Shave Club original content is a little bit more self help, a little bit more grooming focused, a little bit more how-to, uh, and and I think that you know brands that want to be successful today need to think about, um, and this this will sound cliche and trite, uh, like a soundbite, but it's true. Thinking about different ways to tell their story, we've purposefully chosen to invest millions of dollars in our content um, in our in our content ecosystem because it's not enough to just. Um, you can't just have a branded content shop. Uh, you can't just have um, you can't just have advertisements that sell your products. Uh, brands now are, are you know need to make a meaningful contribution to our life on this planet, and 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 not just you know and so you can't just get that done with advertising. Um, so I think I think. Uh, Building an in-house content team uh, with an editorial mindset, an editorial-first mindset, um, has been a big competitive differentiator for us, and we can we can measure uh, the success of that in spades. Great. Uh, I think we're out of time. So, Michael, thanks so much uh, for being here with us today, Thank and you. Uh, thanks so much. Cheers. Okay.